Welcome to the exam room with Nurse Alice. Hello friends and welcome to the exam room with Nurse Alice, the show where we take a closer look at things going on in the world today, everything from health and wellness to love and lifestyle to politics and pop culture. So get ready to live life well. So this week's temp check is brought to you by Nurse Approved. Uh, when you're looking to travel and do so safely, make sure to visit I Am Nurse Approved, your one-stop shop for face masks, travel kits, and first aid kits. So make sure to visit IamNurseApproved.com. Use the shopping code, The Exam Room, for 20% off of your next purchase. So stay prepared and stay safe. Visit I Am Nurse Approved. So uh, this week's temperature check question is from Douglas in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and his question is, uh, what is the Re uh, Regeneron vaccine or treatment? And will I need that and the COVID vaccine? So some of you may have heard that there is a new medication out there on the market, uh, Regeneron uh, CoV-2. And that was the medication that President Trump received when he was sick with COVID-19. And so I know everyone's a little leery up in arms like, what's this? We're talking about the COVID vaccine. Now we have this Regeneron treatment. So what is it? What's the two? When is, you know, when's it coming and all these things? So I'm just gonna keep it really basic because the most important thing is that you talk to your healthcare provider. But just so you know, the Regeneron treatment is a monoclonal antibody treatment. And so what that is, is there are antibodies that are given to you through an IV uh, to help jumpstart your immune system and fight off uh, the COVID-19 virus and suppress viral load. So, but that it's only for people who've tested positive for COVID-19 and for those who are uh, at higher risk for developing complications. So the target for that would be people who are over the age of 65, those who have chronic medical conditions, diabetes, hypertension, uh, immunosuppressed, um, but it can be given to people as young as 12 years old, but you're gonna need to talk to your healthcare provider, but it's for people who've already tested positive, which is different from the vaccine that's coming down the pipeline. The vaccine is kind of like our flu shot is a preventative measure. So whether you've tested positive, positive or not for COVID-19, the immunization is intended to help us build antibodies to ward off the illness. So I wanted to keep it simple, but just wanted to put it out there because a lot of people have been asking. And Douglas, thank you for asking that question. Um, I know it's a question that everyone has. And uh, because I want to thank you and our sponsors want to thank you, we're going to be sending you some face masks, uh, a first aid kit, and a travel kit to your home, courtesy of Nurse Approved, for asking your question. So guys, if you or someone you know has questions or comments that you want us to talk about here in the exam room, you see it down below, you see the ticker? There you go, there you go. I want you to send your questions and comments to theexamroomtv at gmail.com. And who knows, your question may be the very next question that we talk about here on the show. So we have a great show lined up for you today. Uh, we have Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter, producer, actor, and author, Anthony Hamilton, who'll be coming uh, into the exam room, as well, Olympic gold medalist and long jumper, Brittany Reese. But first up, our next guest is someone who focuses on occupational and preventative medicine. She is a physician who owns a medical concierge service called Acute Face MD in Atlanta. She knows how to fly planes, she rides motorcycles, she owns a restaurant, she's a real estate investor, a mother and a wife, I really don't know what she can't do. Um, and in fact, she's also one of our favorite doctors from Bravo's Married to Medicine Atlanta. Take a look here. I mean, I really wanted to do it since I was in med school, honestly. But I'm saying with the BRCA testing. Yeah, but that's well, just- Not being nothing to worry about. But it's only 10% of people with breast cancer have BRCA. That's really a small percentage, 90% don't. I have had abnormal mammograms for at least 10 years. And my mom died from breast cancer. And I want to do whatever it takes to make sure that that same thing doesn't happen to me. 
please welcome to the show, Dr. Vanessa Metcalf. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I want to say, you know, as far as the clip that we just watched, I want to thank you for sharing your story, uh, your family history, getting screening and sparking that conversation because, you know, we don't talk about these things enough. And by you sharing your story, you've empowered hundreds, if not thousands of people to get screened and talk about their own family history. So thank you for that. And um, keeping along yeah. the line. Oh, no, I was going to say, and there was a little correction there because my husband's like the rocket test said nothing. There was nothing to worry about. Well, that's not true. I had what's called a BRCA mutation of undetermined significance. Oh. And so your BRCA genes, everyone has BRCA. We have BRCA, they're breast cancer genes that actually protect you from getting cancer. When mm -hmm. there's a mutation, then that actually increases your risk of cancer. So I had a mutation of undetermined significance. And okay. so that's what made me worried. Okay, got it, got it. Well, that's helpful to know. I mean, I know breast, can we, breast cancer awareness month uh, was last month, but still we need to be talking about that all year round. Um, and it actually sparks a conversation about prevention. And you have a motto. Uh, prevention is the key to healthy living. And so with the flu season coming, you know, everybody uh, is, is worried about their immunity and getting sick. So what are your thoughts um, on vaccines this, you know, winter season and things that people can do uh, to help boost their immune system? Well, as a preventive medicine doctor, I just have to be honest, vaccines save lives. I mean, the reason that our life expectancy actually is much longer than it used to be is 100% due to vaccines. So what it used to happen was we would get an infectious, infectious disease very much like COVID, like SARS-CoV-2, and we would die, right? Cholera, things like that, um, rotavirus, the, all those things that in the flu, the flu, of course, the flu of 1918, that pandemic killed so many different people. Um, but just to understand how long the flu vaccine has been around, 1936. So it's a very, very old vaccine. And for that reason, it's actually pretty safe. And there are different deviations of the flu vaccine. A lot of people are like, oh, when I get the flu shot, it makes me sick. Well, that's a killed virus. And so what happens is you actually don't get the live virus. When you get the flu mist, which is the one that goes into your nose, that is a live virus. And so some people can, we don't give it to you know people who are pregnant and people who are high risk for like immunosuppressed. But mm -hmm. that is a different, you know, that's a different risk. So no, when you get the shot, you actually probably were already on the cusp of getting sick, but you did not get the flu from the flu shot. <laughs> so no. I'm absolutely 100%, especially in this world where, thir what do we have, 3 million cases of the flu in three weeks? I mean, uh, um, coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, in yeah. three weeks, 3 million cases, 64,000 people in the hospital. I don't even know why you even want to risk the possibility of getting the flu and coronavirus at the same time. Exactly. And so, and some of this, Dr. Contessa, is some of the, they have similar symptoms, right? And initially. And yeah. so a lot of people have, have been concerned, like, so I need to get, do I need to get the flu shot and the coronavirus vaccine? Uh, so I'm also curious to know, what are your thoughts on uh, Operation Warp Speed and uh, <laughs> the coronavirus vaccine? That's really shocking to me. I mean, I, I actually didn't anticipate the flu, I'm sorry, the um, coronavirus vaccine being available probably for another year or two. So the fact that it happened so quickly is really surprising to me. There are different types. There's the RNA and there's a the DNA um, vaccine and both have been found to be about 94 to 95% effective. However, just do understand that there is still, even though the, the um, vaccine got FDA approval, they're going to continue to do studies on people who have gotten the vaccine to, you know, still determine efficacy and safety. And so um, what the, you know, with each, they call them clinical phase, phases of the, you know, like clinical trials. This is a, you know, what happens is people say, I volunteer to participate in this clinical trial for this new drug or vaccine. That's a small amount of people. And then with each progressive phase, if they determine it's safer, it's safe, they continue to get bigger and bigger you know, populations of people that get, you know, served by this, you know, this trial. And so at this point, it's been found to be relatively safe, has been, um, you know, generating an immune response in 95% of the people. And so that's actually a good sign. Um, as far as whether or not, you know, this, I, I mean, I, I'm always worried about when something comes out really quickly and like that, being in that first group of anything, I probably would not have volunteered to be in the study group. So that's right. just telling you how I feel about like new stuff. I, I got an old iPhone, I got an old everything. But I will tell you this, once the data has gotten better, I will be 100% in line to get that shot. I'm just telling you. But um, for the people who 
you know, who are really having really poor outcomes, people who are really severely ill, um, you know, people already, and people who are really high risk of like elderly people who are already high risk of if they get SARS-CoV-2, they can mm -hmm. die. I would say you have to really weigh the risk and the benefits. And, right. and that's what I'm saying. So for the people who are at the higher, highest risk of complications, mm -hmm. I really think that you shouldn't even listen to what the other other people are saying about oh it's a new vaccine, right? There's I lots of reservations. It. It's like experimental. Like if you're if you have like a really you know like a end stage cancer, right? You're like hey whatever I can do to survive. If you're in a high risk population, then this is a totally different conversation. But if you're just a regular person who you know doesn't have any a lot of comorbidities, you probably won't be offered the vaccine immediately anyway. So just to right. tell you that <laughs> they don't have <laughs> enough to serve everyone. Right. So definitely a conversation that you need to have with your health care provider, because yeah. it's going to be a different conversation, whether you're completely healthy and younger or if you're older and you have, you know, multiple conditions like diabetes, hypertension and all those things. But uh, I think, Dr. Kessler, I mean, as health professionals, we share the same uh, thoughts on just having some reservations when anything is new, because we are here to do, you know, we want you to get well and be safe and just we're just, you know, being precautions. We don't want anything to, you know. Uh, anything bad to happen. So that's good. We're just going to be. I don't tell people to sign up for experiments. So I just, and yeah. that's at this point, it still feels that way for a lot of people. And I'm acknowledging that. Yeah. Um, but I do, I will also say that the FDA, despite what people believe, there is no vested interest for them to, you know, fudge the data, right? There yeah. is nothing in them that's, there's no benefit. There's no kickback that happens to these people who are government employees to mm -hmm. get, you know, to, to um, approve something, to look at the data and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, be biased in the favor of, you know, the data. If the data says it is safe, they approve it. If it's not safe, they don't approve it. And that's right. kind of what it boils down to. I think we all just want to be safe. We just don't want any more than the uh, nearly 250,000 Americans to die. So that the point is, you know, we're trying our best. Yes. yes. Take it seriously. Exactly. We're just trying our best to keep people alive, well, and healthy. And along those lines, people are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. Yeah, for sure. So, you, know, you know, this is usually the time of year where everybody comes to the house and, you know, we're all talking and eating and just gathering together. But those behaviors can actually be counterintuitive to how to protect ourselves from uh, the coronavirus. So um, what are some of your health tips for people who are watching to, so they can protect themselves? Well, two things. I mean, you know, the CDC is actually recommending people not gather outside of their immediate family. And so if you're already in a pod outside of your immediate family, meaning that you've been social distancing outside of, you know, with another family, then maybe the, that family can be a family that comes and joins you. Or you're already in contact with another family that, you know, they don't go anywhere and you don't go anywhere. And you guys have decided that we're going to, you know, stay away from everyone until Thanksgiving and we're going to get together. But you see that those are very specific situations. But this whole like idea of doing it like we did it and and it feels like, you know, it's going to sound weird. How we did it in 2019. Those are days of old. Don't get together in big, big groups because it's not really about, again, you and your friends. It's about if you were to contract the virus and then take it to someone who then doesn't have the you know easy case that you had, exactly. then you're going to feel awful forever. And it's really not about, you know, you don't want to live with guilt. You don't want to you know, be that person that passed on um, the virus and unfortunately led to grandma, grandpa, auntie Alice, you know, um, right. auntie Contessa really, really getting really sick. You're going to feel mm -hmm. terrible forever. Yeah, don't bring the COVID home down to your family and your grandparents. Um, give Unless you're going, and if if you can do something outside, if you there can you know. do, if the weather permits, and you can have an outdoor picnic type of situation, that's a little different because again, what we've learned is when we talk about airborne, yeah. when you're in an enclosed space and you're talking a lot, and again with Thanksgiving we're going to be socializing. And mm -hmm. you're to take one in a closed space. That's increasing the risk of you passing it on to other people, which is exactly what you do at a Thanksgiving table. Exactly. And um, so, guys, be very, very mindful with how you celebrate uh, Thanksgiving. Um, again, try to you know only celebrate with those in your immediate and then virtually or outdoors. But Dr. Contessa, speaking of outdoors, you know, we've been told to quarantine, stay home. You know, yeah. don't put off all of the non-urgent visits. But now we've been in this for so long, people actually need to kind of get back out to their providers. So you and your husband, Dr. Scott Metcalf, who, hey, Dr. Scott. He's, <laughs> he's, he's always telling tell you hey, too. Um, so I'm just curious. So you actually have a, you have another practice. Yeah, we just opened our own practice. Wonderful. So are you seeing 
people, more patients coming out? Are they a little still leery about, you know, wanting to come out to see the provider? What are you seeing? You know, it's actually mixed. I would say we are, we've now, I first was working for a big medical facility. And so we had rules. We, for non-essential patients, we were seeing them all via telemedicine. And so now we found that, you know, we've been letting more and more patients in the door. And so some people are actually eager to kind of get you to see them. They don't feel like they're getting a full exam are really getting their uh, message across with telemedicine. But telemedicine has been a wonderful tool for providers to really reach the masses. Um, with that being said, um, we have seen, and it all depends on the type of patient. So if we're talking about, especially patients with mental health disease or addiction, then a lot of times they have to get labs and things like that in order to continue to on the medications that they're on. Um, and so for some people, you do have to see them. You have to get vitals. You have to get information from them. Um, so it all depends. But some people we have scared indefinitely, and they will never leave the house again. <laughs> Until the vaccine is out there, they will. They have just said, I will not go. Their kids are still at home with them. And one big thing that has happened, unfortunately, is, I don't know if you saw it, um, I think it was on 60 Minutes, there are a lot of kids who aren't even in school right now. They're just completely unaccounted for because their parents have locked them down and they don't even have access to, to the technology to keep them engaged in school. So we have created this kind of, you know, now this hybrid of what America looks like. There are people who are going to stay in the house until a vaccine comes and saves the day. And there are other people who are kind of going back to life as though nothing ever happened. I think the right answer is somewhere in the middle. We have to figure that out. It's our new normal. So we're trying to figure things out um, as we go. Um, that's going to be a challenge. Again, not, there's a, the technology divide. Some people have access to technology, some don't. But we've been thrusted into it, especially with the quarantine orders, stay home. But I will say, I think there's a good part of the telemedicine piece because maybe people who wouldn't go out, at least maybe now they'll at least, you know, FaceTime their doctor, uh, you know, through the computer, through the phone. So that's a good thing. But Dr. Contessa, I want to ask though, because you are one of our favorite doctors on TV. <laughs> Speaking of TV, um, mm -hmm. Married to Medicine season eight, word on the street is that it's going to be, uh, it's going to premiere in January. Can you drop some gems? Can you give us a little insight, a little exclusive on what's, what can we can expect this upcoming season? Well, I will tell you, it's going to be a lot of surprises. I mean, some of the people who um, have been, you know, you've been curious about to, what happened to this person. I wonder how they're doing. Are they still in the circle? You'll be able to see some of them come back into our circle, which is actually really cool. Okay. Um, people have been, because of just kind of what happened with the world of being turned upside down, I think a lot of people have let the veil down. And they've allowed you into their homes, into their bedrooms, into their lives, and into what's really happening with them. And so I, I would say this season is probably the most vulnerable mm -hmm. and emotionally taxing that you probably will have ever seen on television. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm really proud of what Married to Medicine was able to do this this year. Oh, we wow. tackled it all from social justice to the pandemic to, you know, drama to, um, you know, relationships and sex, a little bit of everything. Ooh. It's all in there. Is that everything? Uh, uh, lean in. Sex what? is important for you. Sex is important to health. We all know that. You know that. So we, we talked about it all. Ooh. Ups and downs, okay. highs and lows. So it sounds like it's going to be really, really spicy. Um, so we'll have to stay tuned for that. So in January. Um, yes. Now, Dr. Contessa, it's been such an amazing time chatting with you. We got to know where can people follow you, keep up with what you're doing, tell us what you got going on, um, and how can we here in the exam room best support you? Well, a couple of things. One, of course, um, Chastain Integrative Medicine is my husband and mine's new practice. So we're super excited about that. So if you can't come see us in person, we do virtual appointments and just, of course, keep us in your prayers. Um, you can find me on social media, Instagram, Dr. Contessa, Twitter, ATL Contessa MD, and I'm doing a YouTube channel, of course, like everybody else. <laughs> so we got a new YouTube channel coming to give yeah. you another um, glimpse into our family. Um, and we have, I have a couple of books coming out, a little bit of everything, a line of vitamins and healthy supplements. So it's just so many things in the horizon. So again, just keep us in your prayers. Thank you. We, we definitely will. Look, I told y'all there wasn't nothing she could do. She fired planes too, and all this other stuff. So she is definitely Gotta a woman. Got to do it. So Dr. Contessa, thank you so much for your time. Don't be a stranger. We're going to consider you a consulting physician here Absolutely. in the exam room. And we'd love to have you back to talk about those projects as they, you know, get set to release so we can tell our people more about them because we want to support you. Um, so thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Be safe, but have fun. Thank Love you, Dr. Virtually.
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, guys. Um, that was Dr. Contessa. You want to make sure, please support Dr. Contessa. Uh, she has many projects coming. Um, sounds like she's got a lot going on. So please make sure to follow her on social media, all those things, see what she's got going on. And most definitely make sure to watch Married to Medicine Atlanta. You can see her there along with the other beautiful ladies. Make sure to watch it on Bravo. All right, y'all. Our next guest uh, is not Superman, but she might as well be Superwoman because she can leap buildings in a single bound. She is an American long jumper, uh, Olympic gold medalist, and seven time world champion, and the indoor American record holder in the long jump with a distance of 7.23 meters. So let me just do a little translation. That's almost 24 feet. I think that's a little over two cars uh, when many of us can barely even jump rope. Take a look here. The winning jump was performed by American Brittany Reese in the second round. Reese competing in her second Olympics jumped 7.12 meters. To achieve the maximum distance possible, every aspect of the jump must be perfect. The run up and the takeoff from the board. The two time world champion Brittany Reese was fifth in Beijing. In London, the American wins gold in the long jump final, while Elena Sokovla of Russia earns the silver and Janae Deloach from the United States, the bronze. It feels great. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for. I have four world titles, and but this is this is my special one right here. And I'm just so grateful and blessed and honored to even come out here and uh, get this medal. Please welcome to the show Olympic gold medalist Brittany Reese. Hey, Brittany. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> doing good. Oh, my gosh. So, um. I already feel stronger, uh, more athletic because I'm on the show. We have you on the show. Um, that's that transfer of positive energy. Um, yeah. But I first got to ask, what does it feel like being in the air that long? Because like we watched you on the video, you got your speed up, and then it's like you start flying. I'm just like, ooh, so almost like a bird. I mean, what does that feel like to be in the air that long? I mean, does it feel long to you or short? I mean, no, actually, it, it goes by so quick, and you have to get your your motion, your form in as quick as possible. So you don't even know how long you are eating up in the air. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't think MJ got anything on Brittany Reshaw. I'm just saying. Um, so when did you pick up a ball? I mean, you play, do you play basketball by any chance? I used to play basketball in, in high school and in college. Ooh, watch out. You see that long jump shit? I can dunk too. Yeah, I can dunk too. Oh, my goodness. So you starting from half court. You flying in the air with the ball. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. So, um. So I want to ask, um, obviously, you're you're uh, an extreme uh, athlete. I mean, we saw you. You're in the Olympics. Uh, not everybody can get to the Olympics. That's an amazing feat. So kudos to you. Um, but your exercise routine, I'm, I'm curious to know, um, especially for us regular folks, gyms have been closed because of COVID. So we've not been able to exercise. Not like we we was looking for excuse anyways not to exercise. But, um, <laughs> But someone like you who I imagine you're probably in the gym exercising a lot. Uh, what does that exercise routine look like now if it's changed at all with COVID-19? Uh, so for me, it, it kind of changed uh, around April when it all uh, started going down. I had to turn my, my garage into a, a gym and I was practicing at the park. But now that uh, I'm getting ready to train for the Olympics, there we're back at the Olympic Training Center and we're able to uh, practice there and do weights there. So it's kind of back to normal now since uh, the whole COVID situation is still going on. Okay. And I have to say, I think, um, and I'm not sure that I'm uh, many people that I knew, we, you know, when we were younger, all had dreams of, you know, I'm going to be in the Olympics. I'm going to do this. You know, we do a little activity and we, you know, we, we, you know, we think that we're good until you get into a room with people who are really, really good. Um, when, how, how young were you or when can you remember first, thinking I want to be in the, go to the Olympics? I think I was probably around like eight or nine. I was watching Olympics and I was watching Jackie Jonah Kersey and I was watching Kathy Freeman from Australia. So uh, just watching them and with my, with my mom and, and my sisters, uh, it just kind of like was something, but I honestly thought I was going to be at the Olympics for basketball. I wouldn't thought it was going to be for track and field. So when I did track and field in 11, when I started long jump in 11th grade, I knew that um, I probably had, I was on to something and, and the dream kind of just changed up. Oh, wow. Okay. Listen, y'all might, where's, where's the WNBA? Is the WNBA tapping? <laughs> we might be meeting the Brittany Reese on the yeah, basketball to call me. <laughs> Lisa Lester, go on call. Lisa Lester, go on call. Thank you. 
Um, and so, okay, so uh, the Tokyo the Tokyo Olympic Games were yes. uh, delayed. Um, uh, you know, what was that like when you heard? I mean, we knew we were in COVID nineteen, but once you got the final word that it was going to be delayed, uh, what was your thoughts? You know, at first I was devastated because I'm on the verge of retiring, and I honestly thought like 2020 was going to be the last year for me. So I was excited for it. I was in the best shape that I could possibly been in heading into the Olympics, and then that kind of that kind of news like devastated me. But then I kind of turned it around and looked at the positives of it. Of now, this is a I got more time to work on the small things that I probably didn't have time to work on last year. And I, and it just, it just worked out for me for the better to make sure I'm injury free and things like that. So it just turned out to be positive for me. Okay. That, and that's good. And that kind of goes with the saying that um, a delay doesn't necessarily mean a denial, but and it sounds like you were given, it allowed you more time to get things in order. So you actually Correct. might be you know, like, oh, oh yeah, watch out, child. I had a little extra time. <laughs> I'm going to benefit from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. okay. And so um, along the lines with COVID, um, so you have a 13-year-old son. Is he, he is he homeschooled during all of this? Yes, he's homeschooled. Okay. California has a homeschooled yes. Okay, so he's homeschooled. He's doing school with mom. When mom is training, uh, is he training? <laughs> he does. He plays basketball right now. Um, he's also uh, the actual, he's the San Diego long jump champion. Uh, oh. So he got some little athletic skills in him also. So, but he, he we keep him active. He has to stay active at the house. So he can't be lazy in here. <laughs> there you go. PSA, parents. I know um, So with our kids that are homeschooled, you know, especially with this PS5 out. I don't know if y'all got the PS5. Or, Lord, I think that's a little bit of a devil during COVID because now everybody wants to sit and play video games or sit in tears in front of the computer. So uh, take it from Brittany Reese. Get your kids out there. Get them exercising. It's a very important part of their development and growth. Um, oh, yeah. Sure. I can just imagine, you know, these kids nowadays, like you can keep me inside. I was always outside, wanted to play, that's ride my exactly, bike. Now exactly. it's the opposite. It's the opposite. So uh, we got to make sure that our kids stay active. Um, and who knows? Yes. You know, they might they might be going to the uh, the Olympics as well. You, you said you were how old, um, Brittany, when you started I'm wanting to be? In, you were how old? When I wanted to be eight. I was eight when I wanted to. Knew eight I years old. Pursue a professional career. Correct. Let me go and check with these kids. I'm going to say, put this PS5 down. <laughs> I'm going to the Olympics or no? What's going on? If they got one them PS5, they lucky because I'm trying to get one. <laughs> yes. Well, side note, my son have been, I don't know what kind of intel they have. They got, it's like a, like almost like they work for the federal government in a, in a PS5 <laughs> type of world. Cause everybody knows, okay, where it's going to be, where at Best Buy. Okay. Target. That's okay. Not, yeah. That's me right now. <laughs> yeah. So my kids were able to be able to get a PS5. Um, nice. But, and um, you know, but let me, so let me kind of to segue with this. Cause we were talking about staying home uh, mm -hmm. activities that basically changed with COVID-19. Um, and mental health is very much a, a big, important issue. And let me just add to you, uh, a prime athlete. I mean, the stress um, the that I can imagine that you go through with prep preparing, staying diligent, staying focused. Some of us, you know, we say ex go to the exercise three to five times a week and we can barely do that. But someone like yourself on it, on it, lifting weights, running, exercising. And I imagine you have, you know, a, a particular diet you adhere to as you're training and preparing for the Olympics. But you have a team. You have like trainers, massage therapists, maybe acupuncturists, nutritionists. Mm -hmm. um, but I also hear that there's such a thing called a sports psychologist. Yes. So um, can you tell us a little bit about um, your experience with a sports psychologist on top of all of the other mental health things that we have to deal with on the day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so a lot of people uh, in our sport don't understand how important a sports psychologist is. Like you just said, it's a lot of preparation, a lot of things getting going in your head when you're preparing for something as big as the Olympics and also just like a world championship. So I've been blessed enough to have a sports psychologist who uh, just, and she's not, not only my sports psychologist, but like my mental, uh, helps me with my mental, helps me with um, preparing for any kind of eat, uh, just trying to help me calm my nerves and things like that. Cause I, was, I do get nervous still, no matter how many, I mean, I've been a professional for over 10 years, so I still do get nervous. So just having somebody like that to to calm you down, um, help you understand where you at, 
and you prepare for this and things like that uh, is real beneficial in our sport. And I feel like it's it's evolving more because uh, honestly, a lot of black people don't think mental health. When you see a psychologist, right. they automatically think that you know you're crazy or something. But in our sport and and just in life general, I feel like it's a necessity, and I feel like black people should get involved with uh, talking with psychologists. Yeah, I I think that's extremely important because, um, but it's just the, it's um well first off let me say, um you 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 raise a good point about the stigma, about having a therapist like the something's there's something wrong with you there's a problem and I think some of that stems from because we wait so long to get the care that we need and I think some of us experience traumas and disappointments and stress we've kind of normalized what stress is these days but it you know it builds up and then. We don't see someone until it's like it's overflow. We can't handle it anymore. But if we saw a therapist, like we see our annual wellness uh, provider for our annual, you know, our annual visits, annual checkups, I definitely think that having mental a mental health uh, specialist to talk with us along the way is extremely helpful. Um, and I have to say, you know, the athletes, um, and you, and I'm I'm just curious to know how stressful it really is because I mean, you guys have to be laser focused. And, and I mean, you're a parent, you know, you have regular life going on. So how do you like when you're getting ready to uh, participate um, in an event, like how do you quiet all of that outdoor noise and just like labors or focus on your activity? How do you do you have like a, a regimen or do you have like an exercise that you do that maybe you want to share or? So for, for me, uh, while, I'm, while I'm warming up, I listen to a lot of music. I get myself pumped up really well. So the, I think the nerves kind of come out when you first get out there and you see we're, we're, we're competing in front of thousands of people overseas that just love track and field. So when we get out there, you know, that's when the nerves start coming. But after the first jump, you kind of like loosen up and you're just ready to compete and, and, just, and just win. But for me, I just like listen to music and then they call me B Reese the Beast. So I just make sure I'm bringing out the and the beast every single time I'm on each rep. There you go. What's on your playlist? What do you listen to? So, you know, I like I'm I'm from the South, so I'm more like uh, the DZ, the uh, Yo Gotti, those types okay. of the rappers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, good. That's a good stuff. OK. Um, and now I'm just curious. Um, you know, I know you're you're training for for the Olympics. Uh, what else? What else does Brittany Reese uh, do? How does she spend her time, her day? Uh, what's what's it like being an Olympic gold medalist on a day to day? So right now, um, because I'm heavy in training, like I'm my main focus really is just training. And then like my son is in basketball, so I have to on weekends sometimes I'm driving back and forth uh, with him. But as of right now, I'm just laying low, trying to trying to keep the mind right. Um, reading, I like to read a little bit. Um, I like to play video games also. So those are kind of things that I kind of do in my spare time. Shopping, uh, I love that too. So I'm just keeping it chill right now. And once at the Olympics uh, is over, that's that's when I kind of ramp up and try to do vacations and go spend time with my family and friends and things like that. Okay. So right and when is ramping? When does ramping up begin for you? Because Olympics are in 2021. So when does that ramp up period start for you? Uh, we started in October. So oh, you already started. Okay. Yeah, I already started. So but things started getting will start getting real serious around around April, uh, March and April, where things will start to to gear up, and I will start being in more and more heavy training. So as of right now, it's kind of light training, but just getting the body back in shape. Mm -hmm. And then around April, this when we'll get 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 it really going. Okay. Do you ever share any of your exercise regimens or routines uh, with with your viewers or your fans? Because you know we try to stay fit. <laughs> In Insta on Instagram, um, I do I, some when the season get ready to start. I do post some of the drills that we do. And my coach, people will follow the coach. Also, he's really big on the internet. So we will uh, post videos of cer certain drills that I'm doing. I also do some personal coaching on the side where I'm uh, trying to get involved with the youth more. Um, to get them going because I, I've, I've learned that Americans versus like Europeans, we're kind of like behind on certain on certain things. So I want to catch the youth now. So we will be yes. caught up when, when they time comes, basically. Love it. Love it. And I love it because representation matters. Um, so when we see, you know, whether music, icon, icons, athletes, educators, 
vice presidents. Hello. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> Yeah, representation matters. So I'm so glad to see that you're reaching out to the youth and doing those type of things. Uh, I love that you're being a role model. Now, uh, Brittany, can you tell the people where can we continue to follow you and how can we here in the exam room best support you? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram at the LJB uh, and I'm also on Twitter, the LJB. So you just find me more on there. Uh, I do have a Facebook that I use for family <laughs> oh, and, and a lot of fans. Yeah. <laughs> so other than that, I'm, that's, that's, that's basically where you will find me. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Brittany Reese, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, we had a chance to talk with you. You're definitely an inspiration. I love that you're reaching out to the youth and we will be watching and cheering you on from the sideline. Um, <laughs> thank you, you so um, much. Perform in the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right, y'all. Now, our last guest for the evening, uh, he is a Grammy Award winning multi platinum singer, songwriter, producer, actor, author, and an icon who proudly maintains the traditions of timeless RB through everything he does. His career has spanned over three decades. He sold over 50 million albums worldwide to date, and he's delivered some of our most beloved R&B classics. Uh, and he was definitely a must have on everyone's grown and sexy playlist. Uh, some of my personal favorites are Best of Me, The Point of It All. But I think one of my favorite favorites uh, is his song, Charlene. Take a look here. Y'all, you know it was real. He fell on his knees in the bed. Please welcome to the show, Anthony Hamilton. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Anthony. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Very Thank good. you so much for joining us. Um, you look great. You look great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I try to keep myself and, uh, up. Oh, that's black magic. Yes, it's all looking good. The hat, everything. Now, I have to do a confession, but I don't think I don't think this is my confession, but I'm sure women all over the world did this. When we would hear the song Charlene, I was jealous. Like, why is it Charlene and why is it not Alice? But I would plug my name in when uh, the song. Was so, um, you know, I just want I just wanted to confess that because I'm pretty sure other women did, too, because it's an amazing song. One of my favorites. Um, Thank you. Yes, it is. And um, so. You know, I've been we've been listening to your music for over the past three decades. Um, music is definitely in your blood. You're so talented. Um, but with COVID-19, you know, it's kind of changed some things in your industry, how you uh, can get music out to people. Um, how has that been for you? You know, in the beginning, um, it was a much needed uh, break for me. Uh, the rest was cool. I can complain about having some downtime to my own bed and enjoy my home but as the months kept rolling on it, it became a little hard uh, you know i have a team of people who i'm responsible for making sure that you know they can feed their family so financially for them it, you know it was a it was a it wasn't so good and it became a burden for me so finding ways to be creative um being able to touch people um you know it, it's hard when that's what you do for a living and just just the safety and making sure my kids are healthy and and all that stuff start to 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 mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yes, and it's definitely been a change. It's yeah. been a change, a disruption from what we know. Um, but you are creative, so you've been very. Sounds like you maybe had some creative ways with getting music uh, out to us and being creative with using your platform uh, yeah. to talk about very important issues. Because I've seen you on social media, I follow you on social media. Yeah. You've been very vocal about voting. Um, and being safe during the pandemic, um, and even kind of keeping along with the pandemic, you've used your artistry to help deliver messages and raise money for relief efforts, right? Can you tell us a little bit about some of the work that you've done? Yes, uh, I have a foundation called Taste, Take a Step to Elevate. 
and it's mm -hmm. uh, a nonprofit. And we, we were doing um, community outreach, uh, feeding people, uh, having food drives, uh, voter registrations, and just mm -hmm. loving on people and try to be there for, for those who may not feel like, you know, they matter during these times. People losing jobs left and right. Uh, money was funny. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, to eat when you don't have the resources and, and the financial. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you and your, your nonprofit have been able to do that. And even, and maybe it was your, your organization that uh, was partnered with these folks, but I've seen you, you've done some COVID-19 relief efforts through like the virtual saving ourselves, a BT COVID-19 relief effort. You've uh, extended your voice to under one roof live stream to benefit North Carolina artists. I mean, you've done stuff with the Global Citizen and the World Health Organization live streaming um, there from your living room on Instagram. So definitely lose, using your amazing voice to right. continue to raise awareness, um, help keep people employed by, you know, keep getting these functions going. Um, so kudos to you for that. But Thank let you. me ask this mm -hmm. with juggling COVID and your uh, the changes in your industry. You're also juggling that with fatherhood. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, I have six sons. I'm a, I'm a father of six kings. Mm -hmm. My oldest is oldest is 32. I was very young when I had him. Uh, I have a 29 year old and a 23 year old, and my mm -hmm. twins are 10 and the eight year old. So the the younger three, I just got them showered and in bed, and, I love and came in here in time to uh, to be ready for you guys. So. Yeah, I have a real life outside of music, man. It's uh, you know, washing dishes, doing laundry, clipping nails, cutting hair, uh, cooking. I love to cook, um, and uh, yeah, being a real, real father, real man. Yes, and um, and thank you for being a real man, taking care of the children. I love that You're positive uh, role model in your uh, young king's lives. But and I have to say, the whole getting the kids ready, you know, before you came to show. That's the life of a parent. We're always juggling. So even before we had a lot, I had to tell my kids, shh, mommy's about to tape. Y'all stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every now and again, I holler at them on the, on the live. Hey! Dude, listen, uh, the black mom, we just throw a look. We, we don't have yeah. to do Yeah. So, like, I wish you would. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know that look. I wish yeah, you I know it. Like in the look, grocery straight, store, touch nothing. <laughs> yeah, I straightened but, up when you did it. I, I straightened up. There you go. There you go. Now, um, you talked about cooking. I'm going to segue a little bit. You talked about, uh, uh, obviously, you have mouths to cook for as well as yourself. Um, you also have a book, Cornbread, yeah. Fish, and Collard Greens, which, by the way, are my favorite. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have some of this for Thanksgiving anyways. But it's inside the music. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about your book, Anthony? Well, the book, uh, you know, it tells the stories uh, that that led up to these songs, the relationships that it, that it took uh, to make these songs, uh, the hard pain, the heartbreaks that I've given people, uh, the loss. Um, so much that happened in my life. It's it's in this short read, and it's very mm -hmm. powerful. And it tells you know about Charlene and the deeper story about Charlene, a cornbread fish and collard greens. Um, her heart, how I wrote that song from a real place. Um, you know, I was married before and uh, just wasn't in the best place to be a husband. Um, so eventually mm -hmm. that created the song. So it, it goes into some really deep, honest and raw uh, dialogue with myself and uh, for for my fans. But it's a yeah. must read. It's, and there's some recipes in there, some really yes. good recipes uh, that I came up with a few. Um, I'm going to do a, a, a remix to this to this book and have some vegan and some plant based options mm -hmm. and some things for people just to have a variety. There's some scriptures, okay. some amazing pictures. So it's a good book. Get it. It's a very no, it definitely is a good book. It's been a good read and it's an easy read. Uh, yeah. Again, about your songs and kind of the inspirations and stories behind the songs. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, we always like a little inside, a little feel like I'm part, like, oh, I got some tea. What's happening? Oh, this is what we're going on. So it, it actually helps build like a personal connection. So, I mean, I already love your music, but then, it, you know, I fall in love more with the story behind the music. And I mean, you say inside the music, um, but y'all, 
He got some good recipes in here. So if you don't know what you was gonna make for Thanksgiving, you got some recipes in here that you can add. I'm about to try this cast iron cornbread recipe. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. go ahead now. Listen, so. you know, he has some recipes in this book, which are really good. And you do have, you have some scriptures from the Bible. So, you know, some things that we need to uh, think about, reflect on and meditate about. So um, yeah. it's a really good book. And um, speaking of music, um, you have a new partnership and it, you have to tell me more about this because I, I want to make sure I get it right. A new partnership with uh, My Music Box and BMG, yes, right? My, yes. My so, music box. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Oh, no, no. I, I'm, 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 I'm teeing it up for you. I'm teeing it up for you. So this is a new partnership. Um, yes. So My Music Box and BMG and mm -hmm. the first release from this uh, collaboration is Back Together. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. Okay, so what I want to do, I, I want to play, uh, I want to play some of the music from a, a video from Back Together, and we're gonna come back and have you tell us more about it. So let's take a look here. Wow, it's really good to see you. Again. Okay, so that's amazing. I was over here bopping like, hey. I mean, in true Anthony Hamilton fashion, it sounds so good. This is something that you can just ride out to. You can, look, you can cook, you can clean, you can have company, you can do everything to this type of music here. So um, tell us more about this song and the whole collaboration and uh, my music box and BMG. Uh-oh, we got you on mute, Anthony. There we go. Oh, yeah, somebody had muted me. Uh, but, uh, I got these big lips. They can read these big lips. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> being, you know, being in the industry for for years and years, and and being on major label, you get to a place to where you want to have your own and have some ownership. So, I think it, it was a perfect time for me to, to to start my own label, my music box, and we partnered up with uh, BMG, which is a major major uh, label globally. And uh, my first release was. Back together featuring Rick James, who's uh, I'm a big fan of. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was produced, it was produced by Knife Wonder, who's an amazing producer and uh, and uh, really really great brother. But when I heard the music to um, to the you know Fire Desire, I I had to 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 make this happen. I had to have Rick James singing along with me, not just a just a sample. I wanted him to be featured. I, I think we owe owe it to the uh, the crazy who, who came before us. So. It was the first single, a first look. And I had planned it to be a happy summer, outgoing, skating, and then the pandemic oh, yeah. came. So my plans for this song, it was a happy, everybody outside type of song. Um, and then when the, when everything shifted, I was like, wow. If I had known that, I would have put out, I had another song that was ready for that. But, but it mm. still made a lot of people smile, a lot of people happy. D nice played it a lot and uh oh yes yeah. yes he did yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah um it's definitely feel good music it's definitely yeah. feel good music and you're right this is i can imagine everybody you know uh playing this music cruising around outdoors yeah. like yeah. roller skating look y'all y'all don't know yeah. about the skate rink Let me tell you <laughs> that's some real feel good music um and so and i own it and i own it i have ownership I own my masters. I own my, you know, I'm a CEO. I'm, I'm, you know, it's at a certain point in your life, you have to take control and have some ownership of something that belongs to you. And I think it's a smart way to to do it um, with my music, and then from there, I can go into anything I want. So, absolutely. Um, and I think during this time of COVID nineteen, a lot of people are learning uh, those things because. Uh, and not everybody has this gift of music uh, that you do, but people were getting laid off from their jobs. You know, 
staffing with their hours were cut down. So like, what am I going to do? So I think a lot of people tapped into have tapped into their creative side, um, whether it's sewing, whether it's cooking, whether it's graphic arts, but people have started to shift and, you know, become their own boss. So we're seeing a lot of more entrepreneurship. And I'll say this, especially in the black community, I think yeah. it's so, so important that, you know, as you said, you own your masters, you're your own boss, because so many times we work for someone else, we build up another brand, we bring in them millions of dollars, you know, they're flourishing. And at any moment we could just be cut from, you know, cut from the staffing. And then what do we have for ourselves? Yeah, exactly. That's very important. And I'm glad you touched on that because it is, we, uh, we create so many cultures and so, so much. We are the culture. You, you, <laughs> well, yes, we are. We create it and, uh, and people, you know, they always steal in it. And so when you can have ownership of it, it, it's so important and uh, we, mm -hmm. we deserve it. Absolutely. Um, and now, so along the lines, of, you, you, you said you alluded to another song. Are you going to be releasing another song from from this album? Or like, when, when, <laughs> you, you, you spilled the tea, not you me. So I'm you, just... you think you're slick, Nurse Alice. I know, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, yeah. There's um, actually, there's the uh, Trumpet Awards is coming up. And okay. uh, there's a song that's dear to me that speaks um, to the heart of, you know, most black men who endure so much over over the course of our, you know, our existence, our, our existence. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a song called Mercy that that's featuring uh, Tamika Mallory, who's an activist. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a very powerful sister. So she starts the song. She sits, sets, it up, uh, sets the song up really nice. And... Uh, it's a really, it's a, it's a heart wrenching. It's a good a Anthony Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's one of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's powerful. I, I think we need it, and uh, I can't wait for the fans to get this one. Okay, yeah. and and we we pro we do need it. We 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 need our Anthony Hamilton fix. You know that. Stop playing. Yeah. We 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 need our Anthony Hamilton music. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that and other music that you release. Um, do you have other artists or anything that you're bringing to this label, or is this just you right now? What's oh yeah, I have some really amazing people. Uh, J X Hines is an incredible artist here from Charlotte. Man, he's I put him up there with with the Chris Browns and. Mm. All the greats, um, the Jacques and uh, Bryson Tillis. He's in that, he has that new young sound, but great music. Uh, uh, London, London is an incredible singer. She reminds me of uh, Whitney Houston, but she she Ooh. has so much. Oh man, she's a great writer. Uh -huh. um, um, there's a, a young lady by the name of Essence, she be Essence, uh, a guy named Peach. And that's a little young guy by the name of KJ, who I really, really, I, you know, I haven't had, I, I haven't signed him yet, but I, I really believe he has what it takes to uh, be the next big, big thing. So, oh wow, I'm excited. yeah, that's the exciting and, part. Oh, I, I can, I bet it's exciting, and it's especially yeah. when you hear someone who has real talent, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, I, I know there's lots of people that sing, but sometimes when you hear certain voices or certain people perform like you are moved so it's that yeah. kind of it's that kind of music so we're, we're we're looking forward to that now um and before i let you guys i just want to ask because you know covid and you're you're now your own boss uh mm -hmm. with your label you're now you know responsible going to be responsible for putting all these artists out that's got to be stressful all of these things collectively um what are some of your favorite uh self-care habits or things that you do to help keep you mentally, physically, and spiritually well during all of these challenging and stressful times? You know, I, 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 I pray, I pray a lot. Um, prayer and meditation is really good. I try to meditate when, when I can, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I take time out to, uh, to pamper myself with a good bath, Ooh. a good shower, a massage. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to ride my bike, uh, I take my, my 10 speed, 15 speed, whatever it is. And I, I know I pedal, put all my stress away. Um, and I cook, I have a good meal, take nice walks, play with my kids, you know, yeah. go outside and do some simple things. Um, I, I make sure I, I eat really, really good. I eat a good, clean, more, more so plant-based diet. Um, okay. and, uh, you know, some, some seafood, um, 
every now and again. But you know, a little glass of red wine, you know, okay. keep a good balance. There you go. Uh, and nothing wrong with that. And, I, and, plus, and I smile a lot. I smile there a you lot. Go. Well, yeah. smiling is contagious. When we smile, all of you know, it releases mm -hmm. feel-good hormones. So that's actually good for us. So yeah. um, I think more people need to smile because I mean when you smile, it made me smile. And so, yeah. you know, that's one easy free way of how a simple thing can um, help us to feel better. Um, but now I have to say something. You said you go outside. I was on your Instagram. I saw you planting out there. I saw you with some trees, some plants with some trees. So uh, you got, yeah. do you have a vegetable garden too? I mean, what, what's going on with the, with the garden? Well, in this, in this, this community where I live now, it's, you know, they have the HOA and all their rules oh. and stuff. So, so I'm in the process. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to sell this home and get my own land and, and, some more land and uh you know grow a garden and teach my boys uh about growing their own food and you know you are what you eat and if you plant if you if you plant it and grow it then you know what you're eating and uh yeah and and it's a, it's a big business that's you know been attacked by you know the the big corporations they want to run it all and control yeah. our food what we eat but uh so if you start on your own i think it's the safest thing Okay. Uh, a lot of herbs, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, you know, vegetables and fruit and stuff like that. You know, it's good for the body, cleans you out, and uh, it does. And so, I was, and I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Say that again. No, I was just wondering if you had a garden because you, with you know with your recipes, and I don't, and I'm a gardener, so I actually um, uh, just harvested some collard greens, which were really good. So I was like, you know what, for Thanksgiving, yeah, I have. Let me just, uh, I have collard greens and I have some uh, sweet potatoes that I'm I'm waiting until tomorrow, what, what the day before Thanksgiving, to pull them up. I'm gonna keep waiting on it. Let it be good to me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep waiting on it. Let it be good to me. Sweet Ooh. potatoes, sweet potatoes, don't come out. Check it later. I, I don't know. I just, you know, I love. Oh no, no! I was, I was like, hey, <laughs> I'm ready for you. To say, come on home to me, <laughs> Nurse Alice. Look, I know I can't sing, so I don't want to hear no comments. Okay, right, I was just. Right. Saying. <laughs> but no, um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, and this has been such a wonderful conversation. I mean, yeah. we're just just peeling back the layers. Uh, but Anthony, I want to thank you so much for being on the shows. But before we let you go, I would like to know. Where can people follow you and how can we best support you here in the exam room? Well, I'm on Instagram at Anthony Hamilton official and mm -hmm. uh, my Twitter is Hamilton Anthony and uh, my my Facebook is Anthony Hamilton Music. Okay. And, uh, you can probably catch me in a grocery store uh, or somewhere, you know, buying some good food. Um, there you go. Are you in North Carolina? Are you, are Charlotte, where? Charlotte, oh, you're North in Charlotte. Carolina. Yeah, we, might be kinfolk. we might be kinfolk. I got family in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Charlotte and Wingate and Monroe. We might be yeah, kinfolk. Yeah. So I'm related to Casey and JoJo, and I'm related to um, my one of the guys from the Hamiltons, Jay Vito. We all related. And I think Fantasia is our cousin as well. So we may be because I have people down in Waysboro, Wingate area. Yes, because we are actually, my, I'm distantly related to. Um, to them as well, uh, JoJo and KC as well. It's distantly, yeah. but somehow in the mix. So Let me find out how much family. Dale's and the Smiths uh, all the people. The family there. reunion after COVID is done. I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> we cousins. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, so we, we, we put Anthony's social media platforms there, guys. Uh, so make sure, right, we're gonna wanna support him with his book, his music, all those other things. And oh, lastly, before I let you go, do you have any virtual performances or anything coming up that we can look forward to, please? Yes, the Trumpet Awards are, are coming. Um, I forgot the exact date, but the Trumpet Awards is the next thing that, that I have. Uh, okay. I'll perform two songs. There's a, a tribute um, to all the fallen people we've lost mm -hmm. this year and uh, the rendition of a Donny Hathaway song, for all Ooh. we know. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it's really beautiful, and and then I'll perform Mercy as well. So, okay. oh, what? So the next the next single from your album that's coming out? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. When? 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 Do when the single I, the single should be dropping pretty pretty soon in okay. December sometime. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. In time for the bad, I'm pretty bad with dates, but I'll be all over Twitter, and Instagram, and. 
Facebook, letting y'all know every step of the way. Wonderful. And we will definitely be watching and supporting. So Anthony, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you. Don't be a stranger to the exam room. We'd love to have you come back and share anything that you got going on. Cause you know, that's what we do here. We support our fellow black magic because, um, we're all unicorns and amazing. So we got to sh showcase that because representation does matter too. So just as you were on here talking about that, there is some little girl, little boy who wants to do what you do, who's looking you know, up to you. Um, your example of fatherhood, being there for your kings. Look, in the kitchen, at cooking and cleaning, y'all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, uh, Anthony. We appreciate you. And thank you for joining us here in the exam room. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Thank you all. Okay, guys, so make sure to support our good brother, Anthony Hamilton. We have his book up there, um, Cornbread, uh, Fish and Collard Greens. Please make sure to go get your copy. Please continue to support his music. Be on the lookout for his new single and his future artists from uh, uh, My Music Box and collaboration with BMG. And guys, I love doing this every Monday. Um, it's always fun for me. I mean, we had an amazing show today. We had Anthony Hamilton. We had... Um, Olympic gold medalist Brittany Reese, and we had the beautiful uh, Dr. Contessa Metcalf from Mary to Medicine LA. So um, I really enjoyed today's show uh, and want to, I hope you did too. And I hope to encourage you to come back uh, next week. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Let me get, let me see here. We have a great lineup for next week as well. We have Muhammad Ali's former doctor and world renowned surgeon, Dr. Uh, Leslie Ray Matthews, who will be coming to talk to us. We have the actor. Omar Gooding. I know y'all have seen him on several things. Um, and then our musical guest for next week, we have the one and only Raheem Devon. He'll be joining us. So make sure to set your clock, tell Siri, tell Alexis, put it in your schedule, tell you, you know, write it on a Sharpie on the wall. Don't write it on the wall. But you know what I mean? Write it down somewhere every Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in here to the exam room with Nurse Alice. And, you know, just as I end every segment, thanking uh, uh, thanking every guest, you know, asking them where we can follow them and how we can best support them here in the exam room, I'd like to extend that request to you, the viewers as well. Please uh, would appreciate your support here at the exam room, me and my entire team. So if you could please go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Ask Nurse Alice, subscribe, like, leave comments, share, um, anything to get the word out about the exam room because it's an important show. I feel like it's we're talking about health and wellness, um, adding a little bit of entertainment, politics, and pop culture in there. It's always helpful. And then you can also support us via Cash App at the exam room. You can see it down below in the ticker. And so regardless of your support, whatever it is, how big, how small, it doesn't matter. I love you for it. Thank you in advance for it. Um, and again, thank you for supporting and watching us here in the exam room with Nurse Alice tonight. So guys, until next time. Please make good choices, be kind to one another, and live well. Until next time.